this morning, which is going to be about uh, diseases related to the lymphatic system. And actually, we prefer to present these two lectures together because the presentation of lymphatic disease is very uh, similar to uh, similar to uh, a presentation of venous disease. So, uh, because of this similarity, because of this similarity, we prefer usually to present lymphatic disease in conjunction with uh, with venous disease. So uh, in, in, in this lecture, we'll be talking about uh, about lymphedema. Uh, lymphedema is edema due to uh, uh, abnormality of the, of the lymphatic system. Uh, so we will define uh, this lymphedema and we will list and classify uh, listed uh, lymphedema and we'll describe the uh, etiology of this condition. And the clinical presentation, and then we will try to find how to differentiate between edema due to lymphatic disease and uh, and edema due to, for example, venous uh, venous disease. And uh, we may also try to uh, uh, recognize possible complications of of lymphedema and deficit. So in this lecture, we'll be talking about lymphedema. Mainly, we'll be talking about lymphedema definition, uh, classification, uh, etiology. And, and and differential uh, diagnosis okay so first of all I have got some questions for you before we start in, uh, in this uh, in this lecture this is uh, this diagrams uh, on the right side uh, shows a terminal venule uh, a terminal uh, arteriole and in between uh, this is the capillary this is the capillary okay so, uh, what is the role of lymphatics here in this uh, in this capillary system? If anybody can answer this question, exchange. Yes, exchange another opinion. The, the blood retaining, it's not the same as the amount which go uh, out of the arteries. So, the remaining portion of the extracellular fluid will go back through the lymphatic system. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, just to repeat what you have said. Uh, that fluid is filtered from the from the from the arterial side here, is filtered uh, filtered in the capillary here. Some most of that fluid is retained by by the venule. Most of that amount of fluid filtered here for exchange between capillary and tissues is retained by the venule. Less ten percent, less ten percent, ten percent of this fluid uh, which has been filtered in the capillary cannot be drained by the venules, and this is drained by what? Drained by lymphatics, drained by uh, lymphatics. Okay, so what, what do you call this this law of uh, filtration in the in, in, in the capillary and uh, reabsorption? So what do you call this law physiologically, which governs uh, governs this uh, process? Do you have any idea? Do you remember from the, your, your physiology lectures? What do you call this law? Yeah, there is a law. Uh, identified is that there is filtration by hydrostatic pressure. Yes, an oncotic pressure is returning the fluid back into the venule, and some ten percent of that fluid is retained by lymphatics. So, what is the law of this capillary function or uh, from higher pressure to less pressure? Yes, uh, actually, you call it Frank Starling law. You call it Frank Starling law. If you heard of this law, have you heard of this law, Frank Starling law? Have you heard the Frank Starling law? Yeah. Anyway, anyway, uh, we have we knew now that ten percent of the fluid filtered at the tissues or at the capillaries is retained by uh, by lymphatics. So uh, lymphatics eventually, when you go towards the heart, they become the channels become uh, they start as small actually in lower limbs, and they when you go towards the heart, the the, the channels becomes uh, bigger. Okay, and eventually uh, is drained by what lymphatic channels and by the thoracic duct, uh, which eventually drains where into the uh, into the veins in the upper part of the body. Okay, so eventually lymph, eventually lymph drains into the venous into the venous uh, venous system. Okay, so this is the most important uh, uh, one, of, one of the most important functions. Yes, yes, Sammy. Any questions, yes, Sammy? This is one of 
this is one of the uh, important functions of the uh, of the lymph is to return is to return uh, the fluid filtered at the level of the capillaries or to, to return some of this fluid towards the, the the circulation any else any any other uh, any other function any other function yes uh, immuno uh, immunology function how can you explain how because it's uh, when it's drained it's going through the lymph node which is full uh, of uh, white blood cells in the yeah you see here you see these nodes which are interposed in uh, in these lymphatic channels you see these nodes these are lymph nodes in which you get what uh, lymphocytes in which you get lymphocytes so while lymph while lymph is passing through these lymph nodes antigens can be presented to uh, lymphocytes into in, in, in these nodes uh, and this can result into initiation of immune uh, immunological uh, uh, reactions uh, to produce for example antibodies uh, against uh, any invading organism so this is another important function of uh, of lymphatics uh, that it has got an important neurological function okay yes so, uh, so what's lymphedema? If you are talking about lymphedema, what is lymphedema? Uh, the definition here is in the front of your eyes in this slide. It's abnormal limb swelling uh, caused by the accumulation of increased amount of high protein in interstitial fluid secondary to defective lymphatic drainage in the presence of near normal net capillary filtration. So what, what is the conclusion of this is, uh, statements here? In that, first of all, there is limb swelling and this limb swelling is due to accumulation of lymph is due to accumulation of lymph it's not due to venous obstruction or due to venous disease okay so the problem here is mainly that there is a defective function involving the lymphatics result into accumulation of lymph and lymph is different from uh, from venous blood in that the concentration of protein is high the concentration of protein is uh, is high so this is the main difference between uh, between edema, uh, between edema due to lymphatic disease and edema due to venous disease. That in edema due to lymphatic disease, the amount of protein accumulating in the interstitial uh, spaces is much higher than that in the in case of venous obstruction. In case of venous obstruction, you get filtration of mainly water, clear water. While in case of lymphatic obstruction, you get mainly filtration of what of uh, of uh, or accumulation of high protein uh, fluid. Uh, one question for you here before we proceed: what, what do you think this will give rise clinically? The difference that that's, that uh, may arise due to this fact that venous edema is mainly due to uh, accumulation of watery uh, fluid or water, mainly water, while uh, venous uh, or, 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 or lymphatic edema or lymphedema is due to accumulation of high protein. Uh, high protein fluid. So, uh, what do you think this will give rise to clinical difference with these two conditions if you are uh, doing physical examination? Anybody can answer this question. Not the thing, Edema? Yes, very good. Uh, very good. Because in venous obstruction, because the fluid accumulating is mainly water, then the edema will peak, or you get peaking edema. Uh, you can easily you can easily uh, press and make an indentation in the, sw in the swollen uh, tissues. While in case of lymphedema, because it is not mainly water, uh, the concentration of protein is very high. Uh, it gives rise to something like gelatin, gelatinous uh, material actually, and it does not pit like in case of venous uh, edema. So one 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 uh, important clinical difference between lymphedema and edema due to venous obstruction is that. Lymphedema is non-fitting, is non, uh, is non-fitting. Okay, so there is, uh, for example, obstruction or hypoplasia or of the lymphatics, and because uh, the ten percent that is usually drained by lymphatics cannot can no longer be drained because of this uh, abnormal uh, lymphatics, then you get what uh, you get accumulation of fluid, and then you get lymph uh, edema, which is characteristically uh, non-fitting. Now we will talk about classification of, uh, of lymphedema. Lymphedema is classified mainly into primary and, and secondary. Primary and, and secondary, okay? Primary, whenever we say primary, usually uh, the cause might not be uh, known. The cause might be unknown, okay? 
while secondary is secondary to something secondary for example to uh, obstruction due to cancer malignancy secondary to obstruction by uh, for example yeah, uh, uh, microbes or, or parasites uh, secondary to uh, obstruction due to trauma for example okay so basically you have got two types of lymphedema primary and secondary the primary lymphedema is further divided into three categories primary lymphedema is further divided into three Category. The first one is, is known as congenital, is congenital, and this is known as Milroy's, Milroy's disease. Usually this is present at, uh, at birth, or it might present at the age of two years, okay? So uh, around the age of two years, around the age of two years, usually you get this uh, type of primary uh, lymphedema, okay? Uh, it is more common in males than in females. It is more common the, uh, in males than in uh, than in females. Okay, and it is more common also uh, on both sides. It's more common on both sides. I mean, it tends to be unilateral more than uh, more than uh, bilateral. So the most important thing that males are affected more than females, and usually this uh, lymphedema present at the age of around two years. This is the most important fact. Uh, Facts that we need to know regarding the uh, Milroy's disease, the first type of primary lymphedema. The second type is known as lymphedema precox. Lymphedema precox. And this lymphedema precox is more common in females than in males, in contrary to, to Milroy's disease. It's more common in females than in males, and usually it present, uh, presents uh, around, around the age of uh, pregnancy, childbirth, and menstruation. Okay? So usually, uh, after the age of two years and up to 35 years of age, up to 35 years of age, this is the classical age in which you can get this uh, lymphedema precox. So around the age of menstruation, around the age of pregnancy and, and childbirth, you can get, you may get this uh, this uh, precox. More, more common in females than uh, than in males. Okay, usually around the age of uh, menstruation and uh, and, and uh, child. The third type of primary lymphedema is lymphedema tarda, lymphedema tarda, which, which usually present uh, later in life after the age of 35 years. Okay, so the age here, the age of the patient in primary lymphedema is one of the most important differentiating factors. Okay, so again, congenital lymphedema usually present around the age of two years. Lymph, uh, lymphedema precox usually present after the age of two years and up to the age of 35 years in, in ladies, mainly around the age of puberty, menstruation, and childbirth. And lymphedema tarda, usually uh, uh, above the age of 35 uh, years. As I have mentioned, because it is primary, the cause is, is, is sometimes unknown, but uh, this condition can be due to congenital absence of lymphatic channels or congenital lymphatic channels dysplasia or hypoplasia okay uh, this result into uh, result into uh, this primary lymphedema however the age of present have got a wide range starting from the age of two years to above the age of 35 years so presentation can be late presentation can be late but the basic the basic problem is uh, most likely uh, hypoplasia or dysplasia of the lymphatic of lymphatic channels. Okay, so I hope I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. Now, the second lymphedema, on the other hand, second lymphedema, on the other hand, is due to obstruction of lymphatics. It's due to obstruction of of lymphatics, as I have mentioned. And this can be mainly due to uh, infection, and the classical infection that can be mentioned here is uh, filariasis. This is sort of a sort of parasitic infection which is common in tropical uh, in tropical uh, areas uh, the infection is known as filariasis the infection is known as uh, filariasis uh, the uh, the uh, the transmitter is uh, is uh, transmission can be done by, mos by mosquitoes and uh, the man is the uh, is the host of uh, of this uh, of this filariasis anybody knows what is the name of the of the uh, of the organism or the parasite which causes Yes, which causes this trypanosoma? Uh, no, not trypanosoma actually. 
what is the name of the of the of the parasite or the organism based on your uh, based on your basic science uh, knowledge. Anybody else? Have you have you have you? Uh, uh, yeah, Clarice. This is the name of the disease. Yes. So. It's malaria. Uh, yeah, the disease is known, but the the, uh, the parasite is known as uh, Usherichia pancrofti. If you heard of that, Usherichia pancrofti. This this uh, this parasite that enter the enter the lymphatic channels and they cause obstruction of the lymphatics. And, and this obstruction results into uh, into edema or lymphedema. Okay, the condition is known as filariasis, and because usually it results into gross dilatation of lower limbs, it's also known as elephantiasis. Elephantiasis, very common in, the, in, in tropical in tropical regions. Okay, sometimes these lymphatics can be destroyed by surgery. These lymphatics can be destroyed by by surgery, uh, particularly when we uh, do surgery for cancer. Some of these lymphatics are, 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 are excised as part of the uh, uh, tissues removed by surgery. Uh, for example, the classical example is breast cancer. When we remove the breast, we can also remove lymph nodes in the axilla, and this will result into uh, destruction of uh, lymphatics. And uh, as a complication, the patient can present with uh, with edema, with uh, with lymphedema involving the upper the upper limb. Uh, sometimes the lymphatics can be obstructed by malignant cells. They can be obstructed by malignant cells, and this uh, again can result into uh, lymphedema. Radiotherapy, which is a sort of treatment for cancer, can also destruct lymphatics and result into lymphedema or trauma, or trauma, particularly trauma involving the skin and subcutaneous tissues, particularly trauma which is involving the skin and subcutaneous uh, and subcutaneous. Uh, tissues. Okay, deep vein thrombosis and, and, and superficial thrombocytopenias, uh, as they give to, as they give rise to some impedance of arterial blood flow and venous uh, schema, they can also sometimes result into the uh, into lymphatic uh, obstruction. And actually, in some cases, uh, uh, lymphedema can coexist with venous disease. Lymphedema can coexist with venous uh, disease. So these are the main causes. These are the main causes of lymphatic obstruction, which uh, may result into into secondary lymphedema. Okay, so far we have we have classified lymphedema into primary, which involves three types: congenital or Milroy's disease, precox lymphedema precox, and lymphedema tarda. And we talked about the secondary lymph uh, lymphedema. Uh, the pathophysiology is is very uh, similar to that of venous disease, in which you get obstruction of lymphatics, then you get uh, accumulation of uh, protein-rich fluid in the interstitial space. Uh, this will result in limb swelling, but characteristically, this uh, edema will be non-picking, will be non-picking like in the case of venous disease. This is a very important clinical uh, test which will enable you to differentiate between uh, these two conditions. The edema, uh, uh, unlike the case of uh, deep venous system, the edema is involving only the skin and subcutaneous tissue. Edema is involving only the skin and subcutaneous tissue, while the deep tissues, including the muscles, are normal because the venous system is usually is usually normal. Lymphatics usually lies where, where does it lie? Lie usually in the uh, in the epifacial spaces. I mean, uh, above the deep uh, above the deep fascia. Okay. Or, uh, Yes, one main difference between edema and venous edema that venous edema, whenever there's obstruction to deep with the deep system, you get all the deep tissues will also be uh, engorged and swollen, like the muscles and, 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 and the deep tissues. Okay, while in lymphedema, because lymphatics usually run superficial uh, above the above the deep fascia, the edema will mainly involve the skin and subcutaneous tissue, while the deep tissues uh, will not be. Uh, will not be involved. So this is this is not not for the sake of clinical uh, clinical uh, differentiation because in both cases you get limb swelling. But this is something that you should know uh, probably in the in the management of, of these conditions. Okay. So I would say again that venous edema involves the whole tissues in the uh, in the limb, while lymphatic uh, lymphedema involves mainly uh, the superficial 
uh, the superficial tissue. Okay. Uh, secondary to this accumulation of uh, of lymph in the in the interstitial space, you also you got also uh, 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 infiltration of fibroblasts and fibrin, and this results uh, in fibrosis, dermal and subdermal thickening, resulting into dermal and subdermal uh, subdermal thickening. Okay, uh, so again, you can get a picture which might be similar to, to for example, lipodermic sclerosis. You can get here again, uh, fibrosis and thickening of the skin and subcutaneous and subcutaneous tissues. So again, the picture might be very close to that of venous uh, venous uh, disease. However, you don't see other features like, for example, hemosidrosis and uh, and and, 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 and defects, Okay, and the edema will be mainly will be mainly non -pitting. Okay. Uh, when the disease is advanced, when the disease is advanced, uh, second day to this dermal thickening, fibrosis, and subdermal change, you can eventually you can get skin fissuring uh, and ulceration. You can get skin fissuring and ulceration. Sometimes you might see lymph exudating through uh, uh, through these uh, fissures and, and skin ulcers. Okay, and this condition is known as lymphuria. Lymphuria. So lymphuria. As you see, we have uh, this we have lymphuria is transudation or uh, or pouring of uh, of lymph through uh, skin fissures and ulcers. Pouring of, of lymph through fissure and ulceration. Okay, this is known as lymphuria, and this is usually encountered in advanced cases. Usually, this is encountered in advanced uh, in advanced cases. Okay. Yeah, so uh, let, let us now just review quickly the clinical presentation uh, symptoms and signs of, uh, of lymphedema. Uh, in, in case of primary lymphedema, in case of primary lymphedema, there may be some genetic uh, genetic uh, predisposition. Uh, and, and usually, uh, in primary lymphedema, the, uh, the, uh, it characteristically involves the foot. It characteristically involves the foot, and then it might spread proximally to involve, for example, the knee, the thigh. And the whole level. So, if we can say something here very important, I would say that primary lymphedema usually uh, spreads from distal to proximal. Usually spreads from distal to uh, proximal. And this is one important feature which might enable you to differentiate between primary and secondary lymphedema. Okay? So, primary lymphedema characteristically involves the foot and then it might spread proximally. Uh, giving rise to uh, uh, a distal to proximal fashion of the spread, distal to proximal fashion of uh, of the spread, and we'll we'll see in a, in, a, in a minute uh, that this is uh, th th this is the opposite of what what you can get in, in case of uh, of secondary lymphedema. As I have mentioned, the age range between two and thirty five. Uh, three three conditions we get here. Uh, Milroy disease, uh, lymphedema precox, and lymphedema tarda. Uh, uh, in the early stage, the edema is not fitting, but eventually all cases of lymphedema will give rise to fitting, uh, to fitting uh, edema. And the patient will tell you that I experience the swelling more, more in the morning. I experience the swelling more in the, uh, more in the morning. So this is one thing which may characterize. Uh, lymphedema. As 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 the, the day goes goes, or during the day, the the patient might feel better in terms of uh, uh, that the swelling might be uh, less than in the morning, and even the uh, uh, the symptoms uh, the patient is feeling might be better during the day uh, than 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 during than in the morning. Okay. Uh, yes. Be, be, because the patient might. Not be moving through uh, during the uh, night. This will result into accumulation of accumulation of this uh, lymph, and then when the patient walks, uh, this might result into pumping of some uh, some fluid uh, uh, upwards. Uh, uh, and this might result might explain why they feel it in the morning more in, uh, during the day. Okay, but anyway, this is clinically very important. Uh, and coincides actually with uh, with uh, with the lymphedema. Okay. Uh, obesity and genetic predisposition they have been uh, accused. 
as as cause causative factors uh, of uh, of uh, of neem and and this might be encountered while you are evaluating the uh, patient. In, in secondary lymphedema, the, uh, the obstruction is secondary to the condition that I have just mentioned in the uh, last uh, or the slide before the last one. And, and one important thing to differentiate that usually secondary lymphedema usually present after the age of 50 years. After the age of 50 years. So usually it presents usually later in life, in elderly life, okay? So this is one important difference between between primary lymphedema and secondary lymphedema. Primary lymphedema usually uh, at the age of uh, 35, at or below the age of 35, like that. And, 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 and secondary lymphedema usually presents later than that, above, uh, at, or at or above the age of 50, uh, of 50 years. So, so, yeah, so this is one, uh, one factor to differentiate between uh, primary and secondary. The other factor I have mentioned that in primary lymphedema usually it involves the foot and then it might extend proximity involved uh, the proximal part of the uh, of the lower limb. While in, in secondary lymphedema it's all actually the opposite in that the uh, disease uh, first of all start proximally and then it might extend to uh, to distal. So the pattern of the spread actually is one of the factors which will enable you to differentiate between primary lymphedema and secondary uh, lymphedema. But the most important thing in secondary lymphedema that uh, you would find some clinical uh, features which would point to the underlying cause. So for example, if the patient has cancer, then you might find uh, cachexia, for example, you might find, for example, metastatic features, like for example, jaundice, uh, you might find the tumor itself, uh, uh, in the bell, lying in the pelvis, for example, and, and so and, and so on. Okay, or if the patient, for example, have got pillar acid, then you can find, for example, uh, constitutive symptoms of inflammation, like for example, fever, malaise, headaches, like that. Uh, and the patient, for example, has got a contact or living in an area which is endemic with the disease. Okay. If uh, if, uh, if if it is due to surgery, then there will be history of surgery. Uh, indicating that the uh, the uh, obstruction is due to destruction of lymphatics by by surgery. So uh, first of all, the age of the patient and the pattern of the spread of the of lymphedema will give you uh, a clue on what it, uh, what the most relevant of this edema. But in secondary lymphedema, usually you will find some features pointing to the underlying cause. Okay, yes. So when you examine when you examine the uh, the patient, uh, particularly the foot of the patient, uh, one of the most important characteristics things that you should recognize that the, the normal contour of the of the foot is lost. The the foot will be swollen, uh, and and the shape of the the foot will be more or less square, uh, more or less square shaped, more or less square shaped, and. And, and this square shape, uh, loss of the normal contour of the of the foot is known as buffalo hump. Buffalo, uh, buffalo hump. Okay, this is because of the uh, the uh, congestion, uh, edema, and squaring of the of the foot, usually resulting to into into this uh, into this shape. So look at look at this uh, look at this foot. Uh, so what, what what do you think? What do you think, or can you describe what's going here? Uh, towards our school. Yeah, so very, very obviously, the, uh, the, the normal contour of the foot is lost here. And the look is, the foot is uh, actually looks like square shaped. Looks like square shaped. And uh, yes, and this, this square shaped. Is actually the uh, like a buffalo, a buffalo foot, or something like that. If 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 if, if, if it looks like that, uh, this is usually very typical, very typical of uh, of, uh, of lymphedema. So again, here one difference, one difference between uh, lymphedema and venous disease. Venous disease usually affect affect the calf, usually affect the leg, okay, or venous thrombosis. And, and lymphedema, a prime, particularly primary one, usually uh, involve uh, 
evolve the foot. So this is buffalo hump. This buffalo hump uh, or square foot is usually due to uh, lymph, uh, lymphedema. Now I have already mentioned that uh, because of infiltration of fibroblasts, you get some fibrosis of the skin and subdermal tissues, and eventually, as the disease advances, you get uh, skin fibrosis. Skin fibrosis. So the skin will become tough actually, instead of the elastic skin, the skin that you usually experience in normal uh, individuals. The skin will be tough here in case of uh, in, in those patients, and actually. Uh, if you try to pinch the skin uh, over this foot that we have just seen, you cannot do that. You cannot pinch the skin over the uh, over the underlying uh, tissues. Okay, and this is this is a sign. This is a sign which is known as stemmer sign or as stemmer's stemmer sign. So what's the stemmer sign? Stemmer signs is inability to pinch the skin. As you do normally in uh, in normal parts of uh, of the body, so and, 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 and basically you are you are unable to do this uh, to do this uh, pinching uh, is due to the dermal and subdermal fibrosis and thickening due to dermal and subdermal fibrosis and and thickening you 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 cannot pinch the skin like that and, and if you if, if if you cannot do that then. Stemmer sign is positive. Stemmer sign is uh, is positive. As the disease advances, you get fissuring of the skin, and then you can the patient may develop some warts, some warts and the rocky uh, and some nodules. And this can lead you to secondary uh, inflammation. This can lead you to secondary inflammation or malignant transformation or malignant transformation. Uh, if the patient, if the disease uh, extends proximally and result into obstruction of major lymphatics at the level of the trunk or upwards, then you can go, you can get protein losing diarrhea, and you can get chylus ascites, and you can get chylothorax depending on the level of the obstruction. Okay. Yes. So these are the most important. Uh, sorry. Doctor, another point. Smart Yes. Now, the disease, uh, when the disease is confined to the lower limb, it will give rise to to these things like buffalo hump, squaring of the of the foot, stemmer sign, fissuring, the rock and so on. Sometimes the disease might might extend proximally, proximally into the trunk and the chest, resulting into obstruction of the major lymphatics, big lymphatics, which lie in the abdomen and in the in the trunk. So, if obstruction of lymphatics occur at the level of the abdomen, this will result into chylus, chylus uh, ascites. Or if the obstruction happens at the level of the uh, of the thorax, then you can get a chylo, chylothorax. Chylo in relation to lymph. Chylo is in relation to uh, lymph. So, in both conditions, you get accumulation of lymph. In the abdomen, we call it chylus ascites, and in the thorax, we call it chylo. Because sometimes, for example, if you got a secondary lymphedema. Then the parasite might also obstruct lymphatics, medial lymphatics in the upper part of the body, and this will result into uh, swelling of the lower limb, but also accumulation of fluids into the abdominal cavity and to the thoracic uh, cavity. Okay, uh, patients might also develop uh, diarrhea sometimes, and this diarrhea will be characterized by uh, the uh, uh, will be containing a uh, large amount of uh, protein. Uh, that's why uh, it's called protein losing diary okay so is that clear so so, clear, thank so you. Uh, yeah basically obstruction in the low for small lymphatics in the lower limb but uh, again the obstruction might also involve uh, big lymphatics in the upper part of the body resulting into other manifestations upwards okay uh, yes please describe what do you see here please describe what do you see here Enlargement of the foot. Yeah, this is actually is not. You, you, we cannot say this is just enlargement. What do you what do you call it? This is actually gross dilatation. No, yes, this is gross dilatation uh, of the lower limb, leading into almost destruction of the normal anatomy and loss of function, leading to destruction and loss of function. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. So this is yes. So this is uh, this patient actually have got elephantiasis. This patient have got what? Have got elephantiasis, okay, and you can see the gross dilatation here, and you can see also the 
uh, skin thickening and fibrosis, which is quite disfiguring, you know, quite disfiguring, you know, this condition. So uh, w whenever you reach this stage, it's, it's very difficult to treat with the human. It's very difficult to treat with the So usually it's, 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 it's wise to try to uh, diagnose the disease in early stages, uh, where at that time the uh, chance of cure will be much more than when you get the disease uh, advanced to this stage. So this is an example of uh, yeah you you get you get you get every, every time you get uh, deposition of, uh, of fluid and then you get inflammation deposition of fluid inflammation eventually it can reach actually to uh, something which is quite disfiguring like this okay so this is the classical uh, example elephantiasis why why they call elephantiasis because you can see here how much this lower limb became big it's just like just like the foot of an elephant. And that's why the the, the filariasis is, is also known as is known also known as uh, elephantiasis. Okay, yes. Uh, now, one of the most important complications that you can get in uh, in lymphedema is malignant transformation. Malignant transformation. Okay, so. Uh, in any in any patient who have got a long-standing lymphedema, if you if the patient develop a nodule, a, a pinkish nodule or bluish nodule or something like that, uh, which have got a short onset, uh, then you have to suspect uh, you have to suspect malignancy. You have to take biopsy from that swelling to rule out the possibility of malignancy. And, and this sort of malignancy which you encounter on top of lymphedema is is known as lymphangiosarcoma. Lymphangio uh the you sarcoma okay so the patient might might, might uh, present uh, might present with this uh, with this ulcer with this uh, nodule and sometimes he might present with ulceration uh in both cases you have to suspect malignancy particularly if the if the new is long uh, is long standing there are also other other sort of uh, malignancies which are associated with uh, with lymphedema uh, this includes uh, Kaposi sarcoma, uh, squamous cell carcinoma, uh, something which is clear, uh, near to margarine ulcer because uh, you, you develop it on, 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 on a long standing ulceration, for example, uh, malignant melanoma, and even basal cell carcinoma. All these types of malignancy has been encountered in association with, uh, with, uh, with lymphedema. Okay? So the conclu uh, the uh, the message from this slide uh, is that patients who have got long standing lymphedema they are predisposed to development of uh, malignant transformation or development of malignancy secondary to this lymphatic disease. Uh, so they, they may develop lymphangiosarcoma or other types of uh, of, of cancer, uh, skin cancers, and and uh, when you suspect that uh, uh, if the patient is having uh, an lymphedema for a long time, and then he develop, for example, uh, a nodule, suspicious nodule, or uh, suspicious ulcer. Uh, so at that time, you have to put that possibility in uh, in your mind. No, usually it does not start with cancer. It starts with uh, with lymphedema, and then secondary to the uh, dermal, subdermal fibrosis, and other uh, changes uh, that happen during the disease. Then the patient can develop. Uh, cancer secondary on the lymphedema, not 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 not, not the uh, the vice versa. Uh, yes, uh, this patient have got uh, have got uh, lymphedema, uh, and as you can see here, there is some uh, fibrosis, uh, some thickening, uh, some thickening uh, in the skin, and uh, loss of the normal contour of the ankle here. Uh, so yes, more or less, uh, you may see uh, a picture like that. This black uh, color might be warts. As, as I have mentioned, the patient can develop warts as they're looking. And, not, and, uh, and, and he might have an ordinary skin, secondary to this, uh, uh, to, uh, to lymph, uh, to lymphedema, okay? Uh, regarding the differential diagnosis, uh, the, some conditions might mimic lymphedema and the, the classical one is deep venous thrombosis, deep venous uh, thrombosis. The patient in, uh, in, uh, in this case will again present with, uh, with, uh, with uh, 
uh, leg, leg swelling. Uh, I, I need just one of you to tell me how how could you differentiate between lymphedema and edema due to venous deviner thrombosis? Any any points you uh, that you might mention here, please? I think an embedding edema. First of all, yes. First of all, uh, if you want to be systematic, starting from history, going to physical examination. If you want to be uh, systematic, what, what would you say? First of thing, age of the patient. Age of the patient, yes. Age of the patient. Uh, this, uh, we have already talked about uh, age variation. Start this study. Uh, 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 before that, what about the sex? What about the sex? Yes, we have to ask about the gender. It's more common in female. Yeah, so if, if you are talking about primary lymphedema, it's, it's known to be more common in, uh, in, uh, in for example, mm -hmm. in case of uh, lymphedema precox. Uh, yes, and while deep venous thrombosis might also affect uh, male and Male or uh, female, and uh, but but lymphedema precox is mainly encountered in uh, in uh, in uh, in females, actually around the age of puberty. Any, anything? Do to pregnancy. Yeah, uh, evaluation of the risk factor. Yes, evaluation of the risk factor. Even a thrombosis, usually we usually the patient is bedridden for a long time, usually, or he has some some. Uh, 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 thrombophilia, for example, cancer or something like that. Okay. Uh, while in lymphedema, uh, the cause can either be unknown or can uh, be due to filariasis, for example, or radiotherapy or something like that. So the etiology can be different if you if you are careful in taking in taking history. Yes. Uh, a genetic predisposition again is one of the uh, factors you might be prominent in in case of uh, lymphedema rather than venous venous disease. Yes, uh, what else? Anything else? What by physical examination? The nature of the edema, whether it's spitting or not. Yeah, this is one thing. Yes, what else? Tenderberg test, Tenderberg test. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this test is usually done for done for very for very cause basis. But I'm talking about a patient with uh, leg, leg swelling, yes. It can be due to deep thrombosis or lymphedema. Yes, we have uh, mentioned that. In, in venous disease, it is pitting. In lymphedema, it is not pitting. Anything else? Uh, no, pitching skin. That's all. Pitching, uh, pinching the uh, foot. You cannot pinch the skin over the foot. Uh, you, first of all, uh, it is usually distal involving the foot in case of lymphedema. And it might spread uh, proximally, while in venous disease, usually. The disease affect the the, the the leg or the calf muscles mainly. Yes, uh, stemmer sign. Yes, stemmer sign is positive usually in lymphedema. Stemmer, not not smear. Stemmers. Uh, I I just write it here. Uh, stemmers. Stemmer sign. So stemmer sign is positive in lymphedema. Um, usually negative in case of data thrombosis. Yes, what else? Anything else? Anything else? A physical examination? Uh, buffalo hump appearance. Okay. Uh, Squaring uh, hump or, hump or loss of contour of the foot. Because the disease may affect the foot in, in primary epidema mainly, not like in deep deeper thrombosis, yes. Uh, it could go to the uh, or cyclothorax. Uh, yes, uh, lymphedema in advanced cases, the patient might present with uh, with uh, chylo uh, chylosocytes or chylothorax. Yes. What else? Concentrating on the or concentrating on the lower limbs. Maybe we see uh, ulcer or marjoline ulcer or different type of ulcers. Both of them they can develop ulcers. What's the what's the main difference? Both of them they can develop ulcers. When there is fissure, there will be a spreading of uh, lymph fluid out the uh, fissure. You mean lymphuria? Yes, you can get lymphuria. But I mean, if there if there are ulcers uh, in both conditions, what would be the difference? It's tight, it's tight, doctor. We'll go to the area, honey. Yes, yes, you, uh, yes. Usually, 
usually ulceration, ulceration in case of venous disease is usually confined to the greater area, while ulceration in, uh, in lymphatic disease can happen in the foot or can happen in other, in other part of the, uh, of the lower limb, okay? Yes, so this is very characteristic uh, regarding the uh, site of ulceration. Anything else? What about development of warts? Not only nephoria, they can develop warts and they can develop and they can develop the rocky, which are small small swellings at the on top of the uh, on top uh, or nodules on top of the swelling. Uh, so uh, usually you don't get this in case of uh, in case of nephilim, in case of venous disease. These warts and the rocky and small uh, nodules usually you don't get it in case of uh, venous venous disease. Okay. Uh, any other any other difference? Uh, what about the uh, what about the tissues uh, which are involved in both conditions? What do you think? Regarding to the venous uh, thrombosis or obstruction, it will be all the tissue around, yeah. uh, along with muscle tissue. But in the lymph, it will be subcutaneous and the skin. Yes, very good. So in, in deeper thrombosis, uh, superficial and deep tissue are involved by the swelling. While in case of lymphedema. Uh, epifacial tissues or tissues above the deep fascia. I mean, mainly the skin and subcutaneous tissues are mainly affected, while deep tissues are not affected by uh, by, by by swelling. Okay. Uh, one differential diagnosis in uh, a condition which is encountered in ladies. Yeah, if uh, a patient who got lymphedema, they can develop malignant transformation. There is a condition which is known as lipoedema. Lipoedema. This condition is usually encountered in females, in fatty females or in obese ladies, uh, which is which is uh, this condition is characterized by deposition of fats, particularly in the lower part of the body. So the obesity is mainly involving the the lower limbs. Okay. So uh, this is normally due to normal and due to obesity, some sort of obesity, but obesity with a certain uh, with a certain uh, feature or certain pattern. Uh, this condition is known as lipoedema. is known as libo, uh, lipoedema, okay? One condition which might mimic uh, lymphedema. So this, this, these are the most important uh, differential diagnoses of lady swelling, uh, including lymph, uh, venous uh, deeper thrombosis or venous disease uh, and, lymphatic, and lymphatic disease. In addition to this uh, condition, which is known as lipoedema, uh, so these are the conditions which might usually encounter in the clinical uh, in the clinical practice. Uh, so uh, actually, this is the uh, last uh, part in, uh, in this uh, presentation. So we have talked about the, uh, we have talked about the uh, uh, lymphedema, the definition of lymphedema, the characteristics of uh, swelling in lymphedema, we classified lymphedema into primary and secondary, and then we talked about the main clinical manifestations, symptoms and signs uh, which you might encounter in those uh, patients, and then we finished by by, by how, how do you differentiate between edema due to lymphatic disease and edema due to venous uh, disease, because these are mostly the, the, the two important differential diagnoses of uh, of, uh, of of leg swelling or lower leg swelling. Okay, so I hope now I hope now you are aware or you understand the basics, the basic knowledge regarding venous disease and uh, lymphatic uh, disease, and how do you differentiate between between these two uh, these two conditions? Okay, so if you have any questions, please uh, whether in this lecture or in the previous lecture, please. <laughs> Yes, pardon. في المحاضرة هذا سلم دكتور الآن البروكسيمال والديستر 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 تيجي كونتينيوس دكتور وكيف يعني كيف أنا كفيزيشنز أفرق بينهم طيب for example let us take for example primary lymphedema primary lymphedema usually start distant يعني if you if you saw the patient early you will find the swelling confined where confined to the foot and if you keep seeing the patient for example in the outpatient uh, in the outpatient uh, uh, clinic then the swelling will be uh, 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 spreading proximal, okay? Involving some down with the ankle, then move upwards to the leg, and then move upwards to the level of the knee, or sometimes even the, the above the level of the knee, okay? While if you see, if you saw a patient with second lymphedema, for example, 
the swelling might be above, not distant. So the swelling might be at the level of the knee or at the level of the uh, of the calf, uh, but eventually it can spread lower down to involve the foot. Okay. So here the difference is is in the pattern of the spread from proximal to distant or from distant to proximal. This will give you a clue about the underlying. That clear? Yeah, in the sort of secondary, and it rarely extend the uh, after the knee. Yeah, usually start proximal and then it might spread distant. Okay. Uh, okay. Why? Yeah, but primary the opposite. opposite. Yes, right. The primary the opposite. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Any other question, please? Any other question, please? Any other questions, please? Uh, Nasser, Madri, I have told you about 100 times. Madri, do you have a problem, technical problem? Or is this the virus? No, I don't know. I don't know. No, but in the case of Nasser, Madri, what is the problem? Nasser, what is the problem? Yes, I am. Are you with me? Yes. I see your hand is raised here on the screen, approximately. أكثر من عشرين مرة. ما بالغلط يا دكتور نسيت أشيلها. أوكي أوكي. No problem. Any other questions please? Any other questions please? So I will I will I will send you the lectures today إن شاء الله. So I hope that you go and read more about venous lymphatic disease in Bali Allah the clinical presentation. Of, uh, of these two important uh, conditions, okay? So, uh, if, if you have no more questions, if you have no more questions, please raise, raise up your hand for attendance, please. Raise up your hand for attendance, please. Raise up your hand for attendance, please. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, please do uh, raise up your hand, please, if you have any question, or, or talk to me, please. Uh, uh. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, and uh, see you later, inshallah. Okay. For my group, for my group, please, my group in portfolio, please uh, send me your portfolio by email. Please send me your portfolio by email. Okay, and I will respond by email also. Thank you. Thank you so much, and see you.